What you intend to do matters. Now, it doesn't matter 100% if you drop a water balloon off your balcony and it hits someone. You can't say, well, gee, I didn't think it would hit anyone. Because even if it wasn't your intent, your action was reckless. But in a lot of things, what you intend to do makes a tremendous difference. So the rabbis tell the story of two workers, each of whom was carrying a heavy stone. And somebody standing at the side of the road said, what are you doing? And one of them said, I'm carrying a heavy stone. And the other one said, I am helping to build the Temple of Solomon. How you think about what you're doing changes the action. Intent matters. And that matters for this week's Parsha because we learn about the three pilgrimage festivals in our Parsha. Pesach, Sukkot, and the one that's coming up, Shavuot. Now, what is a pilgrimage festival? In Hebrew, they're referred to as Rigalim, from the Hebrew Regel, which means leg. Because on a pilgrimage festival, you walk. Since in ancient times, there wasn't public transportation. And the idea of the pilgrimage festival is, of course, that everybody goes to Jerusalem and there offers a sacrifice three times a year. And the principal obvious reason is that you have to offer the sacrifice and you have to go to the temple. But there is a deeper idea in a pilgrimage festival. And we, as Jews, understand it. Because what is it that Passover commemorates? It commemorates leaving Egypt. And what does Sukkot commemorate? It commemorates traveling in the wilderness. And what does Shavuot commemorate? It commemorates standing at Sinai. And what do all those things have in common? You had to get there. And so, a pilgrimage festival is also a reenactment. The intention is, just as our ancestors walked, we too will walk. They walked through the desert to get to Israel. We walk from our homes to get to Jerusalem. And the reenactment and the meaning of it goes even deeper it is in the words that we use to refer to the festivals. Because in our parsha, in Emor, we talk about the Ohel Moed, the tent of meeting. Now you may or may not know that there are two different purposes for an Ohel Moed. One is for the priest to offer a sacrifice. That's why Aaron is given all these rules about what you do to make an Ohel Moed. But the other is for the people to meet God. And Moses is instructed, not in our Parsha, but Moses is instructed to build an Ohel Moed so that when someone wants to go and meet God, they will go to the Ohel. In other words, the Ohel is a place. It's a tent. It's a sanctuary. It's a this. Right? And by the way, for those of you who don't know, look around. This sanctuary was designed to look like a tent. That was the idea. It's an ohel. It's a tent. It's a pretty permanent tent, but it is a tent. But going one level deeper, the word moed from ohel moed, from the tent of meeting, is also the word used for the festivals. They're called Mo'adim. When you say to someone, Mo'adim l'simcha, what are you saying? Have a happy festival. Which means, since a festival is a point in time, and a tent is a point in space, that Mo'ed is both time and space. 
Now, I don't want to say that the Torah knew about Einstein before Einstein. I don't want to say that. You're welcome to say it if you want, that they knew that time and space were somehow the same thousands of years ago. But I will say this, which is that the only way, here's the difference between time and space. I mean, there are obvious differences, but here is the real deep spiritual difference between time and space is you can go back to a space. Those of you who were here last week, you're back. But you can't go back in time because even though you're back, it's not last week anymore. Now it's this week. So you can go to space again, but you can't go to time again. So what do you do in our tradition to go back in time? You reenact. Every year we go through the Exodus. We go back to that space. We go back to Egypt. We go back to the sea. We go back in time by creating a moed in space. What do we do with the sukkah? We're not in the desert. We're in a different place, but we put ourselves in the same place by going back in time and being in a sukkah as our ancestors were in a sukkah in the desert. What do we do on Shavuot? We're not at Sinai, but we put ourselves back at Sinai by staying up and saying prayers and learning and being ready to receive the Torah. So we make time and space come together by our pilgrimage in time because we go on that journey in our tradition to the same places that our ancestors went, even though we're not in the same place that our ancestors are. It is brilliant and wonderful what the Torah does and very deep. And it's all hidden in that word moed that you have to pay attention to, to realize what it is teaching us. So somebody could be up on Shavuot and do nothing in particular, but someone else could be up on Shavuot and be building the Temple of Solomon. In other words, they could feel the deep intent of what it means. And what it means is we are reenacting the experience of our ancestors because we want to revisit time as well as revisiting space. So going on a pilgrimage is different from taking a walk. All of us take walks, but not all of us go on pilgrimages. To celebrate a regal, a holiday, a festival, a pilgrimage festival, you have to understand the historical context and also the spiritual goal. So the spiritual goal, obviously, for Pesach is liberation. For Sukkot is fragility and the permanence of God. For Shavuot is the revelation of the Torah. And for each, we walk in the same steps that our ancestors walked to try to achieve the same place. And here is the last comment I will make about place, is that place refers to two different things. It's a physical place and a metaphysical place. Place can mean to reach the same place inside ourselves that our ancestors did, right? I am now, as receiving the Torah, I feel myself spiritually in the same place that my ancestors were. But also, place in our tradition means something else. When somebody is in mourning, what do you say to them? Hamakom yenachem etchem betoch sha'ar avelei tzion v'yerushalayim. May the place comfort you. Makom means place. May the place comfort you among the mourners of Zion and Jerusalem. Because in Judaism, God is called the place because the world is the place of God, even though God transcends the world. So we seek the place not just the metaphysical place, but also the place that is God. And we do it by going on pilgrimages again and again and again 
year after year after year, just as our ancestors did, just as our parsha describes, each year hoping we get a little closer in time and in space, Continue.